All right, so we're gonna do the second set of titrations. So I've got my vinegar sample, I have a clean, dry beaker, and a beaker that will be used for waste. So grab your volumetric pipette, pour out some of this vinegar sample, right? So here I go to make a rookie mistake. Don't ever pipette out of our vinegar sample. If your pipette is contaminated with anything at all, you introduce that to your entire sample, which is bad. So I'm just pouring out a smidge of vinegar sample here. I'm going to pull up some of this into our pipette, because what we want to do is condition the pipette. We want to rinse and coat the walls of this with the solution that we're going to use. That way we're not diluting or contaminating our vinegar sample that we're actually trying to analyze. So I'm blowing the pipette out here um, because I'm not actually using it to measure here. I'm just pulling some liquid up. I need a bit more vinegar. I started pulling air bubbles through, so I'm getting some more vinegar in here. Put my bowl back on, pull some up. That's probably about enough. And then tilt the thing, let the vinegar sort of go throughout the pipette, coating all the walls. And then I'm forcing it all out again, right? So this little vinegar I have left, I'm gonna just get rid of. It's potentially contaminated with what we started with. I'm also gonna give this a tiny rinse of the vinegar solution that we're actually trying to analyze. And now I'm gonna dump my vinegar sample out into this, right? I poured probably 50 or so milliliters there. Um, don't, no need to be excessive, right? Each titration we're using 10 milliliters, I'm doing four titrations, so I shouldn't get more than 50 milliliters, right? So pull our vinegar sample up past the 10 milliliter mark on our volumetric pipette, pull it out of the liquid, and then slowly release my finger until it gets by it, I mean the meniscus gets to the bottom of that line. Tap any that I've dispensed off and transfer it into a clean, dry Erlenmeyer flask, right? Now, this takes a while to drain out, right? So I'm trying to do other things with my hands while this happens. I pulled over the other Erlenmeyer flask so it's ready to go. I notice I'm not forcing it out. I'm not taking the pipette bulb and blowing the tip out anymore. Whatever drains out is what's being dispensed is 10 milliliters, and I'm tapping off any drops that have come out the tip because those have technically been dispensed. So start again, pull this up past the meniscus, or sorry, past the line, pull the meniscus up past the line, pull it out of the water or the vinegar, let it drain until the bottom of the meniscus gets to the top of that line, tap it off, drain to the Erlenmeyer flask. Right? So while this drains out, I'm going to tap the bulb to the table to keep myself interested and grab the next Erlenmeyer flask. All right, notice I'm pointing out that there's a drop left, so I'm tapping that in. And now I'm pulling up another 10 milliliters. And I'm making this look easy, but I've been doing it for, you know, 10 years or so. But again, pull it up past the line we want to measure our 10 milliliters at, roll my index finger and slowly let it drain out. I undershot, so now I'm putting it back in, pulling the liquid back up, taking it out of the liquid first before I continue. Uh, you don't want to spend time getting the meniscus to that line, because when you pull it out of the liquid, sometimes that can create a little prefer pressure difference, and some of the water can come out with, like, as you transition from liquid to air. Right? So draining this out. Uh, I have one more thing to pipette, and I was just pointing and saying, I don't think that's enough left. So while this drains out, I'm going to refill my vinegar beaker. Again, tap the drops that have been dispensed into my Erlenmeyer flask. This is probably the number one mistake people make when using, you know, pipettes and burettes and such. They don't tap off droplets that are hanging to their glass, right? Uh, Water tends to stick to glass pretty well. It's got a high surface tension, so always make sure to tap that off into your container. Right. So while this is draining out, I'm sort of cleaning my area up. I'm getting stuff out of my way that I don't need. But I've got my four Erlenmeyer flasks filled with the 10 milliliters of vinegar solution. Tap this off. 
Now I'm going to rinse all these because I've, I've tapped the vinegar, the acetic acid solution to the side of the flask, so I want to rinse the sides down so that all of it's at the bottom before I start my titrations. And after this, I'm going to add a couple of drops, two to three drops of phenolphthalein indicator to each one of them. Same indicator as the previous set of titrations. Right, so same color change. It's acetic acid right now, so the pH is low. Phenolphthalein looks colorless. We're adding sodium hydroxide, so I'm looking for that faint pink endpoint again. Right. So I have already recorded this burette initial reading, so I am ready to go here. Pointing out that, again, you want your burette tip to be a little bit into your Erlenmeyer flask, so that way as you're swirling and moving stuff around, almost dropped the burette there, as you're swirling stuff around, you don't accidentally dispense sodium hydroxide outside of your flask. And I noticed, before I went to start here, I'm trying to bring this camera closer, sorry for the blurriness, but there is a small air bubble in the tip of my burette. Right? So before I start, I want to get that out of there. Otherwise, I will be dispensing air when I think I'm dispensing sodium hydroxide and will yield to um, inaccurate results. So I'm just going to drain the tip out, give it a couple taps, make sure there's no air bubbles, tap the tip off. Reread my initial burette reading because it is now changed. All right, Erlenmeyer flask back in there. I'm adding a bit of water here, and it's because solely uh, the Erlenmeyer flask that I was using were pretty large. So 10 milliliters is not a lot of liquid in it. It barely covered the bottom of the flask. I want enough liquid so I can get a good swirling motion. So I'm just adding, you know, a bit of DI water to each of them to give maybe, I don't know, quarter, half inch of depth to the solution down below. And now we are ready to go. So... Open it wide up, watch for some pink solution to start showing up. Grab a piece of white paper to help make it easier to see the color change. Don't drop your burette into your Olemeyer flask like I almost just did. And so now the technique is exactly the same as in the previous video. Um, I'm going fast at first, wide open stream, I'm swirling. As that pink starts to persist from the wide open stream, I'm going to slow down to fast drops. So, you know, two drops a second, something like that. Once that pink starts to persist from me swirling, I'm going to slow down like I just was to about a drop a second or so, right? And then once I get really close to the end point, again, I got to do a drop, swirl it, see if there's a color change. A drop, swirl it, see if there's a color change. Until I eventually get to the point where I'm dispensing partial drops, closing the burette, tapping it to the side, and rinsing it down, just as I was in the previous video. So um, the rest of this video is just me doing these four vinegar, sodium hydroxide, so acetic acid, sodium hydroxide titrations. The technique is the same. So if you want to keep watching, feel free. Um, but at this point, um, it's it's sort of repetition. So if you if you want that, feel free to keep watching. And if not, uh, you're good to go. So I've gotten to really slow drops here, one every few seconds, right? And I think I'm almost here, almost at the end point. So I'm letting out a drop every two or three seconds now, and I'm sort of tilting my head to the side, closely watching for color change. So it's almost there. So I, I think I'm almost here. I'm, I'm tapping off the tip of my burette and rinsing everything in. Give it a quick sort of glance. It's not there yet. So I'm going to let a bit out, like a drop. I think I let one drop through. So now I'm a drop every 
two seconds. I think that's basically it. So tap the tip off because I think I'm there. Rinse everything in. Give it kind of a swirl and a look. Not quite. So partial drop. Tap. Rinse it in. Give that a swirl. Nope, not quite there yet. Do one more. I think my hand slips here. No, it doesn't. All right, good. And that's it. All right. So very, very faintly pink. Again, that was a part of a drop. Let out of the burette. Close the burette to stop it from dripping. Tap it. Rinse it in. Next semester, you guys will get a lot of experience in this, so we'll probably have you watch these videos again, sort of help prep you technique-wise. So refilling my burette. Again, I like to refill my burette at like waist height. I don't like pouring things above my head, so I always take it off the clamp, pull it to the side. You could use a funnel and pour it on the ring stand, but I find myself, uh, I find myself spilling a lot when I do that, so... So next one is up. So the advantage to this set of titrations is I use exactly, I pipette 10 milliliters of vinegar into every single one of these flasks. So I know the volume now that it's gonna take of my sodium hydroxide to reach the endpoint. So I'm not swirling here at all. I know it's gonna take, let's say 25 milliliters according to my first titration. Let's just say it's a, took 25, right? That means this one should also take about 25. So I'm gonna let it go until I'm at about 20 and then I'm going to slow down. So that's what I'm doing now. I, I let it go until it was about 20. And so now I'm going to start slowing, swirling, put my paper under here again. And now go to quick drops. So drop, drop every second, two drops a second, somewhere in that range. I think I accidentally overshot it. I, I did. Yep. So uh, I'm still... Again, I, I potentially screwed this one up. I'm still going to record it. I'm, I'm rinsing the sides right now, hoping that like somehow my solution splashed up and I might be able to save it. But I think the reality is I just overshot the endpoint. So I'm still going to read the burette. I'm still going to write it down as a potentially good titration, but I'm making a note in my notebook that I probably overshot and added a bit too much hydroxide for this one. And again, just with the previous trials, like uh, we'll see when I go to analyze the data if it's if it works out or not. Right? The reality in when you do titrations is like, right, like it's it's a very methodical sort of thing, and it, it does take some muscle memory to get used to turning the burette tip so that you have a specific flow rate that you want. And sometimes your hand just kind of moves a smidge too far, and you accidentally put in two drops into your flask when you mean to put one, and that's fine. Like if you overshoot an endpoint, just make a note of it. Do another titration. There are many times in a titration where I've thought I've overshot the endpoints and the end result ended up being about the same as if I, uh, it, it matches up with my other titrations. So. so again, doing the same thing, I know how much volume it should take. So I'm just letting it wide open until I'm without, you know, four-ish milliliters of that endpoint. And then I'm slowing down and finishing the titration as I did earlier. So I got to be really close here. So I could have let out a bit of a drop, one whole drop. But I'm going way slow. It's like a drop every four seconds. Again, swirling very vigorously. You want all of the vinegar solution and sodium hydroxide to mix together. I think this is basically it. Again, make sure to tap off your burette, rinse the sides down. And that's it. 
So it's got a very, very faint pink hue to it. I'm going to record my end volume of my titration. I think we got one or two more of these to finish up. So I've got my volume. Need a little bit more sodium hydroxide, so I refill in my burette again. So again, every time before I go to start this titration, I'm quickly glancing at the bottom of the burette to make sure that that pipette tip, or sorry, that burette tip does not have any air bubbles in it. All it takes is just a quick glance, but if you ever miss it, then hey, you've dispensed air and not sodium hydroxide or whatever your titrant is. Right? So again, wide open. I know how long these, how much volume these are going to take. So these titrations go pretty quick. Keeping an eye on the burette volume. I know where I started, so I know about where I should end. I must think I'm pretty close. Yep, I'm doing real slow drops. That's a drop every four or so seconds. And again, one hand is swirling, and the other hand, when you you think you're close to the endpoint, should be on that handle, ready to close your burette the moment you start seeing color. Well, the moment you start seeing color persist for a couple seconds. Again, I'm periodically stopping my swirling to just check. I accidentally let a couple drops through there. Again, sometimes your hand slips. Um, sort of the it is important to sometimes stop the swirling um, I, I tend to find issues where lights reflecting colors in the room and so you can think you're seeing a color but it's not actually there so if you stop and let it sit for a second I think this is it right because as the lights coming through the glass and reflecting off of the you know, the glass itself, the surface of the water. Um, when you're doing titrations with phenolphthalein, it's really beneficial to not wear a pink shirt, um, but, or red. So, but yeah, that's, that's it. That's the titrations. You can see the first one is a little darker than the last one I did, but thanks for watching.